Yeah, so this is going to be like icing on the cake where, you know, after looking at the video on reading 22, I just wanted to explain here, uh, you know, how does an analyst convert the operating lease into a capital lease. So I have a small case here. The case is uh, very simple. It has got $100 of payment three times. So the accountant is accounting for it using operating lease. So what he would have done, he's standing right here. So that means the first year has ended. So he would have done is cash down and P&L down, which is basically the operating income. Okay, this being a typical operating lease. But what an analyst need to do with it? Now, since operating lease is one of the off balance sheet items, you got to bring it back into the balance sheet. And standing here, a liability is basically, uh, you know, future obligation. So there are two obligations which are pending. One is this 100 and the other one is this 100. So if you discount them using 10%, which is the IRR of the lease, you're going to get a number of 174. Okay, so as an analyst, I'm using a different color. I am supposed to increase the liability by 174 and reinstating a similar amount on the asset side. So let's say this was motor vehicle. So motor vehicle goes up and lease payable in the books of the lessee, lease payable is going to go up. Okay. So this is the delta that the analyst will make. I'm you know using the analyst in the black color. Another aspect that accountant would have done is he would have in the income statement, he would have reduced it by 100. But what you got to understand is that had it been a capital lease, then depreciation of uh, 249 is the value of the asset reduced, uh, you know, divide by three is equal to 83. So ideally, the depreciation would have been deducted and the interest expense for the first year because of the, you know, liability. So this 249, which was the obligation at T0, multiply that by 10%. So another deduction would have been of 25. So if I am a lessee under capital lease, I will have depreciation and interest. So total deduction of 108. 100 has already been done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to net deduct 8 or the better method is I add back this 100 and deduct 83 as depreciation and 25 as my interest. So earlier entire 100 was going out of EBIT. Now only 83 the depreciation part is going out of EBIT and rest it is going you know after EBIT so 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 so, so the black color remains for the analyst and this is what an analyst has to do so if you have to calculate the debt on equity earlier there was no equity uh, there was no liability which was being recognized by the accountant but now there will be a liability of 174 okay uh, if you have to calculate let's say uh, net income upon assets then obviously net income has uh, undergone some change. It has gone down by net eight and the assets overall have gone up by 174. So these are the, you know, different parameters that you got to, you know, keep into mind while you know doing this adjustment from an analyst standpoint. So I hope that, you know, this small video of three minutes has been clear. I look forward, you know, to hear a good news from you in terms of a very good result. Wish you all the best for level two, uh, you know, again, you know, uh, talk to you soon.